Oh man, I hate to leave town this time of the year because I've got so much produce coming. But I want to give you guys, these are some really important tips that I need to give you guys. Um, I'm leaving. I'm taking off to go see family. Kind of an unexpected trip and I'm leaving my husband here to take care of the garden. And he doesn't garden at all. Like, <laughs> not even a little bit. And so I've been scrambling. I want to catch you up on what I'm doing and and also show you my rain barrel project that I'm doing too. Um, okay, so first of all, the first thing I'm doing is I filled up all the towers full with water and then I used full strength nutrients. So you guys know that in the summer, you wanna go to half or quarter strength nutrients, depending on the weather. Half strength if the, if the temperature is in the 80s, quarter strength in the 90s. I used full strength because I'm just gonna ask my husband, come and just add water. That's all I need you to do is add water. I'm gonna go and finish picking like all the cucumbers um, because there's more coming. Like he will eat the cucumbers. I'm gonna bring them up to my family, but there's more coming. And then he'll also eat the zucchini. Now this is the desert zucchini from Whitlam Organics. And I gotta say, I'm really pleased with it. I'm having less problems with it than I've had with the Dunja zucchini, which is what I always recommended in the past because the Dunja's parthenocarpic doesn't need pollinators. But what I did anyways, you know, like, if you're growing on a patio or you know where it's enclosed, you don't have pollinators. You have to use like dunja or hand pollinate, which nobody ever does. Nobody gets up early enough to hand pollinate. Um, but if you're outside and you've got the sun and the wind and the rain, then you want you can you know bring in um, bees and butterflies and plant some flowers right next to that tower, right next to those plants, and that will bring in the bees and then they will go over and they will pollinate. So I've got these flowers here. I've got this beautiful marigold up here in this tower. And so that's what I'm doing with the towers. And then the other thing is I'm sticking my potted plants into um, containers. And like, these are the old tower garden containers. So there's kind of a risk with this. First of all, you can drown your plants, too much water. And we are actually getting some rain. We're like in our, it's our dry season. And so I was like so worried about rain and then it's raining. <laughs> um, but I don't know what the rest of the week's gonna really look like. It's kind of sketchy. So I went ahead and I stuck these in these containers and um, if I'll watch the weather while I'm gone and if it gets where I see that we're getting tons of rain, I'll just ask my husband to take them out. Would be nice to get these on automatic waters at some point, but these guys will be okay probably because they're just small herbs. They're just herbs. They're just little flowers and here's some grapes. I did not trellis these properly, so I know it. Oh my gosh. I need somebody to come help me do that. Um, I planted poha berry. I'm really excited about that. So that's a husk cherry. It tastes kind of like pineapple or orange. I've never even had one, but I'm planting them. Um, the seeds were hard to start, to be honest. I got them from Whitwam Organics. This stuff usually starts really well. Um, this, you guys probably remember, this was my strawberry tower. So this right here was my strawberry tower. I took um, all the baby greens kits off and I replanted with different things. I got lots of peppers, my buna, things like that. And then um, this is a sun peach cherry tomato. I absolutely, oh my gosh, it's so good, but it's out of control. I, <laughs> I did a, it was like a failure of trellising. So I'm gonna let it go. And then what I'll do when I get back is I'll cut it way back and I'll stick it on trellises. I actually have it on two trellises, but I like need five, you know? So, um, but it's really good. It's a, it's a peach, it's a, I don't know, a peachy colored tomato and it's so good. And then I took the strawberries that were still decent and I put them in the pot here and I put some in that pot back there. And this broccoli will just kind of shade it. Um, I went and harvested all the broccoli um, and, but this broccoli will sort of shade it for a little bit. Um, and then here I meant to transplant all these leeks into the garden. And I didn't, and so we're kind of just gonna eat them as green onions, but there's like way too, I mean, it's way too many, way too many. I need to start giving some to the chickens. I think actually that's leeks and that's onions. That's the, um, uh, just the, what do you call it? The little pencil thin onions. And this, uh, this flower popped up all on its own. I think a chicken left it. Speaking of chickens, you know, they really destroyed my garden. I did not listen to the people that told me don't stick your chickens in your garden. Now they're, I don't know if you guys can see them, they're way over there, but that was insane. Like they were fine for a while and then they destroyed it. Like it was so fast and I wasn't prepared for it. And they also like threw mulch all over the yard and they dug holes all over the yard and 
Oh, I, I mean, I had such a huge cleanup to do after them. And then I had to order like an electric fence and move all oh, blah, blah, blah. So you know what? Don't do it. <laughs> um, so these towers, this is a black crim tomato. We're starting to get tomatoes off of it. Now this here, this is a rain barrel that I got, but it's actually a food safe, um, food grade barrel. And it um, used to hold olives and this company um, turns them into rain barrels. But what I did is I filled it up with 58 gallons of water, five cups of tower tonic A and five cups of tower tonic B and adjusted the pH. And now it's like, it's just ready. I can, um, you know, take this hose and I can run it to the towers and fill it up. Um, my husband probably won't do that while I'm gone. He probably, he's just gonna use the regular hose. And so um, um, that, you know, so that's why I filled the tower gardens up with full strength nutrients. But this is kind of my thing that I've been playing with. I started out putting it on those pavers, but it wasn't tall enough to get water pressure. So I moved it onto these taller tables. And then I started with this hose right here, which is a super nice hose, but it, it, it like the water was like trickling out. So then I changed to this hose. So if you do this, you need a hose that's not gonna collapse and you need a hose that's really wide so you get decent water pressure. So here's my broccoli. I'm gonna eat that for breakfast with a couple eggs. Um, some cukes and tomatoes that I've already harvested. Um, we had this, unfortunately, this timer <clears throat> just stopped working. This is the tower guard and the new timer, the digital one. So I called them up, it's still under warranty. They're sending me a new one, but um, they're out of stock right now. They told me that it was actually shipping containers. There's not enough shipping containers. So the stock is sitting in California, but they can't get it to Memphis. Um, but as soon as the new one comes in, I'll have my husband put it on. In the meantime, <clears throat> the towers are just running full strength and it'll be fine for a couple days to run like that. Um, this is a pepper that I got from um, um, Ricardo Tomolo. Um, I always forget the name of his farm, but it's the St. Augustine pepper and it's sweet and hot at the same time. Now what I did here, I love this thing. So this is the tree diaper and the tree diaper um, actually has the water crystals in it like a regular diaper does. Um, but you, I'll show you, you fill it, you soak it in water, put it around your trees and then it, it grabs water as it needs it as the soil dries out. It'll pull water and when it rains, it recharges. That is so cool. Um, I had to grab a couple more trellises because I've got like, um, down here is, I think that's the um, Korean melon from Wet Wom Organics. Um, I've got a, oh, that's a watermelon. And that's gonna, I'm gonna have to get a much bigger trellis. But for the meantime, I got a small one, but that's from my friend Erin and she has Grow Your Health Gardening. And she has really good seeds that are adapted to hydroponics. Highly recommend her. I'll put a link in and I think I have a coupon code for her too. So she grows them in Atlanta. She harvests, she grows the plants on hydroponics and then she harvests them and the seeds and sells the seeds. And so they're like hydroponically adapted, which does make a difference. The DNA changes. Now, the other thing I noticed is this is my lemon sorrel and there was some holes and also some grass on there. And so I harvested a bunch of the lemon sorrel. And then last night I went ahead and I sprayed. And this is my usual spray. I talk about it all the time. So it's neem oil, Dr. Brenner's cell suds. And then because I saw the holes in there, I added in Captain Jack's dead bug. And so it's like, um, I think it's a tablespoon of each and then you use the sprayer. Or if I use the bigger sprayer down here, the one gallon, then I use two tablespoons each. And honestly, this stuff is super safe. I just, I like just squirt it. I don't even measure it. I just squirt it in. And then you can either use the, the um, Captain Jack's, which is spinosad, which kills caterpillars or, and worms, army worms. Or you can use BT, which does the same thing. But keep in mind, you have to do it again a week later because all, because things will be hatching out. So it's not just like, oh, here's the bugs. Remember they've left eggs and there's more eggs hatching out. Now here I put, I think these guys will be okay in these pots. Um, this is the um, mulberry. I probably, since I think we're gonna rain, I probably should drain up some of the water. Um, you gotta be careful. Like there's this balance between the plants being wet, but then the plants having wet feet, which some plants can tolerate and some can't. Mulberry can, but some plants are just gonna rot if I leave them um, and, and we get too much rain and you know, so I, I don't know, I don't want them to dry out, which is why I put them in these containers because my husband, even though he says he's gonna come out and water, he has a, like a full time and a half job and 
the garden's mine. I don't, he's not, it's not his responsibility. But anyways, he said he's going to help me. <laughs> so I believe him. I just want to make it a little more foolproof. Um, here's my beans. So these are, um, they're not yard long beans and they're not bush beans. They're the ones that get like, you know, eight feet long. Can't remember the name, but anyways, it's, um, it's a, it's a bee. It's a green bean, a regular green bean. They just grow like a big bush. I made a video about that, like a big vining plant and so i've got a nice big trellis here because they will take up this whole thing um and then here i love this plant so this is um african basil and the bees love it speaking of that when you use the neem and the cell suds and you come out in the morning and you ha you spray at night so you don't burn your plants in the sun and then you come out in the morning and you rinse it off because the bees you don't you don't want the bees to be affected by it um and then i tend to have tons of pollinators um, they don't hurt the pollinators. Anyways, so that is um, African basil. And this is so such a great plant because it doesn't ever go to seed. And so it'll just keep flowering, flowering, flowering. And then you can take a piece of it, you can snip it off, remove some of the leaves and stick it in the next pot. And that way you have food for the bees all over your yard. Uh, and that's one of the best plants to bring in pollinators. Um, coming around here, I did replant a bunch of little lettuces. Oh, there's a little tomato, a little funky looking guy. I got a whole pull. And more cucumbers. Again, it's the Summer Dance Cucumber from Whitwam Organics, which I love. Look at this funny guy. He grew curly. A lot of times the curly is because of incomplete pollination. You didn't quite have enough pollinators. Um, this is an orange tomato. I haven't gotten anything off of it yet. Looks like it's probably a later tomato. Um, and there is some kind of older frost damage. We had like a frost and then we had, um, we had a frost and then we had a ton of rain. There was a, there was a tropical storm or something that came through. And this is kind of what happens is, you know, if you have that, then you get, um, but anyways, the plant seems to be outgrowing that fine and it's dry enough where I'm not really worried about it. It'll be fine. Here's my mint, I added fresh compost, and you got little babies coming up. Here's my watermelon, and again, I put a tree diaper on there. So this is a sugar baby type of watermelon, and I've got a trellis for it. Um, I've got, I'm trying some fun things here. Um, I'm just like getting into Thai food, so I planted a Thai pepper and a Thai basil, and that's a verbena. Um, and again, tree diapers on the tomatoes, because I don't, husband, you know, whatever I can put a tree diaper on, I am, as long as I have them. A couple different tomatoes. These were actually um, tomatoes that broke off of the tower garden tomato. And then I just stuck them in here. Um, so you can do that. You can easily propagate tomatoes from cuttings. Um, this is more of that broccoli that I showed you that I harvested. Um, that's another little tomato there. These are walking onions. They haven't started walking yet. And then way over there, kind of all on its own, and I hope it makes it, is um dragon fruit and i had that green on the patio and then i brought it out and then i'm like oh maybe i shocked it i don't know but um here um some more tomatoes i'm very excited about lemon boy this one has just been so fun um this is one tomato plant like it's just crazy huge but um this is the purple bumblebee oh i see i left an empty spot back there i got a i got a another lettuce I can throw in there. Honestly, you know, you can just take a dry Rockwell cube, stick some lettuce seeds in there and pop it in the tower and you will get lettuce. Now here's the underside of one of those tree diapers. So what happens is you put them in the, t in the tub and you soak them in water for about six hours or so. And these crystals fill up with water and then you put them around your trees. It's meant to be around trees. And I have been using them on my trees. And then, um, and then they, the water will slowly go into the soil and also protects the soil too. Um, no weeds, it suppresses weeds. And then when um, it rains, it'll recharge. And so I haven't had to water any of my trees, um, even in this dry season. And it's really been great. And I've been using them for more than a year and I kind of move them around from tree to tree. I should harvest these beans here because um, I, know, I don't think he'll come out and harvest them. Oh, look at, I got another empty space there. Probably look for tomatoes, but he will eat the tomatoes, the cucumbers, things like that. Um, he won't eat like more, he'll eat like a tomato and a cuke a day. So I have more than that coming. 
So over here, I, um, again, I've got some of these. I, these all need to be planted. In fact, I have, see, I have composted mulch to go ahead and plant these trees, but I have lacked time. <laughs> so I've got like an avocado and a white mulberry and different things like that. Um, all, most of these trees, I, I expect all of them, except for this guy right here, I got from um, the reed farm in Delands, and he's awesome because he comes and he prunes. So he came and he, he topped this tree, you know, like I bought this avocado from him, and he goes, hold on before you take it, I'm gonna top it, and he goes, I'm gonna remove some of these. He goes, when you're ready to plant it, he said, you know, just leave four, find four um, um, branches that you like, north south east and west and remove everything else so he's fantastic because he actually teaches you like versus going to lowe's or home depot like when i go to him he teaches me what to do and see he topped this too and he just cut it off and he's like you don't want you know i could probably top it more i could probably bring it all the way down here and have more branches coming out because you don't you know you don't want such a tall tree that you actually can't harvest it right and then the citrus I did buy online um, because it's pomelo and I couldn't find pomelo anywhere locally. Um, and that's my husband's famous citrus. Citrus, it's such a gamble here in Florida, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and grow, you know, because of the ciliad, it's, it's citrus greening. Uh, it's not worth spending money on citrus, but he really wanted a pomelo. So, you know what? I'm just gonna keep spraying it with neem and Dr. Brunner self suds and give it some micronutrients and hopefully it can fight that battle. Also, I'm gonna put it out there because I have some very tall oaks. Oaks have been, are protective against citrus greening. Uh, you can't see it, but way back there, I have an orange tree in the woods and it has never been affected by citrus greening. And that thing is like, it's a very old tree. It's been growing there for forever. I don't know, for a very long time. I don't know. We just moved here three years ago, but it was a well-established, it's a wild orange tree or it's an orange tree that's gone wild. Um, and so I need more trellises. I'm, I'm short on trellises. You know what guys, if you, if you ever see these huge trellises here, buy them, like buy every single one. I got these from Ace and they were $10 and they, I mean, just look at the difference in size. So this is like a $5 trellis. This is a $10 trellis. Look at the thickness, the sturdiness, the height on it. I mean, it's just amazing. Now I can take a trellis like this and extend it by putting bamboo in there and just sort of extending it up. But I, I if you know of anybody that can make these, a welder, like please send them my way. I will buy a bunch of them. Like I'll pay $20 for one of those because they're the best they're going to last forever. The best trellises ever. Um, that's a tasty jade uh, cucumber. Somebody recommended that one. I'm going to try it. Um, and I replanted my spinach. So I've got another crop of spinach coming. And um, oh, and there's my puppy dog checking out the open door. So anyways, um, let's see. Oh, one more thing I wanted to teach you guys. Make sure like as we get into this spring rainy season all across the country you guys really 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 want to make sure that you are protecting your cords these this is an absolute must you have to get these things so this is my extension cord hooked to the tower garden cords if you don't protect these against rain i guarantee you we're gonna get a you get a lot of rain and then one day you'll come out and these things will have wiggled loose and the gfci tripped so that's this thing here the GFCI will trip and it'll interrupt power because that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to detect moisture, interrupt the power, and um, stop the power from coming out. If you don't do that, if you don't protect that cord, you'll come out one day and you'll be like, everything is dead because the GFCI tripped. <laughs> um, so that's really important. The other thing, did I tell you this already? This um, timer, it died on me. Um, and, and so, um, it, this is a tower garden timer. And so, um, I called tower garden and they are sending me a new one. I think I told you all this already, but my husband is, he's also, he found a timer and I'll tell you guys how it works. He found a timer that will actually, um, set off an alarm if it trips an audible alarm. And I mean, that's would be a huge game changer instead of coming out 
and finding your plants are all wilted and most of the time they come back but sometimes they don't um to have something that gives you an audible alarm would be a game changer honestly so i still have a lot of work to do out here in this yard uh, i gotta get um these guys planted and that's a carambola again i put the tree diapers strawberry tree carambola is star fruit um everything's kind of mess I threw, the chickens had come through here and like eaten all the weeds and did a really nice job on this soil here. And so I threw a bunch of wildflowers. So I'm very excited to see what this looks like as it grows. And then a bunch of seminal pumpkins popped up. So I'm gonna let them take over. You can see I have more trees to plant over there. Um, nine blueberry bushes that I planted, some avocado and pomegranate and mulberry that I planted out there. Um, I'll have three different avocado trees. So hopefully I get near year round coverage and then my chickens. So that's it guys. I got to go catch the plane. I will put links to everything that I talked about, the growers, the supplies um, down below. Thanks so much.